At least 21 studies that I recently reviewed have utilized programs that dealt with rounded shoulders effectively. Nine of them used posture correction programs from 4 to 32 weeks and demonstrated significant improvement in the position of the shoulders. In this video, I'm going to present to you how you can follow an easy 5-step posture correction program based on these studies and explain everything you need to know about fixing your posture. First of all, make sure that you do have rounded shoulders because many times rounded shoulders can be confused with hyperkyphosis and vice versa. The difference is that hyperkyphosis brings the shoulders to the front by bending the spine, whereas rounded shoulders is an internal rotation and front position of the shoulder independent of the position of the spine. And as we saw in my previous video on hyperkyphosis, these two conditions can exist alone or in combination. So first of all, make sure that you do have rounded shoulders by watching my free postural assessment guide, which I've already linked in the description. So let's start by debunking the most common misconceptions around this topic and understanding the real cause of this issue. The vast majority of the advice that we hear these days insists on the misleading idea that overly tight muscles of the front area pull your shoulders forward. What this idea suggests is that the pectoral muscles which are responsible for this movement slowly got tight and started involuntarily moving your shoulder to the front. Some say that this is the natural result of training too much on a specific muscle group and therefore training too much on the chest can tighten up your pectoral muscles and cause rounded shoulders. But think about this idea for a second. If working out too much on a muscle group could make it shorter or cause a permanent contraction that could involuntarily change the position of a joint without your will, then excessive work on your shoulders would result in standing like this. Similarly, training your forearms too much would look like this. Does this make sense to you? To get things straight, your muscles cannot pull you in faulty positions without your will, except maybe under extreme conditions or diseases. What actually happens is that our muscles work constantly to support our posture against gravity. When we develop a bad postural habit, what we actually do is let our joints drift down due to gravity. This new position is considered to increase the stress on all the components of the joint and thus it is labeled as bad posture. In the case of the shoulders, this bad posture is characterized by a forward position with a slight internal rotation of the shoulders. When this happens, the pectoral muscles which are anchored to the tip of the shoulders get shortened and stay in this new length as long as the shoulders stay in the front. If you maintain this position for a long period of time, these muscles will adapt to this length and get tight. Over time, when you try to fix your posture, they will of course resist. So deforming your posture by keeping your shoulders to the front will make some muscles tight and not the other way around. Tightness in these muscles is the result and not the cause of this condition and this is what makes a great deal of difference in the solution part of this issue. Today, research has shown that this forward position of the shoulders does not only result to shorter pectoral muscles but is also related to decreased activity in the antagonist muscles of this movement. That's because the muscles that antagonize this movement and are responsible for keeping your shoulder back stay in this elongated position and low activation levels for long periods of time. This results in low body awareness in this area, which means that you can't really feel these muscles and have control over them, loss of strength and loss of strength endurance. However, these muscles that I'm talking about are not the external rotators of the rotator cuff. This is the other big misconception about fixing rounded shoulders, which suggests that training the external rotators of the rotator cuff will pull your shoulders back. The function of these muscles is to externally rotate the humerus bone. As you can see, I can keep them in a full contraction and still have my shoulders in a forward position. That's because the position of the shoulder joint is altered according to the position of the scapula. In reality, the movement of the scapula determines the position of the shoulder. Thus, the only way to fix this condition is by bringing the scapula to its neutral position. The main muscles that contribute to bringing the shoulder back are the lower trapezius and the serratus anterior. Many different research groups focused on these muscles to correct rounded shoulders. Of course, we should also train the external rotators of the rotator cuff, but only for the purpose of antagonizing and creating an active stretch on the internal rotators that are tight and not for bringing the shoulder back to neutral. So let's see how to fix rounded shoulders. I've made an exercise selection based on the characteristics of the exercises that were used in the 21 studies that dealt with rounded shoulders effectively. 
On that basis, I created an easy to follow five step process that deals with every aspect of the problem in the right sequence. I won't be talking much about sets, repetitions, intensity and progressions because I have already linked a thorough explanation on how to apply and customize this program in the description. So let's go! Step 1 is all about ensuring that you have the range of motion needed for your shoulders to go back to neutral position. Exercise 1 is the single arm chest stretch with externally rotated arm. Simply place your fist on the wall around the height of the shoulder with your palm looking up. From this position, turn your body to the opposite direction. Start with 2 sets and 30 seconds. Exercise 2 is external rotations which antagonize the internal rotators and also actively stretch them during each repetition. You can do this with zero equipment on the floor with a water bottle or in many different variations with equipment. A good place to start here is 10 reps for 3 sets. Step 2 is practicing body awareness. This will be the hardest part. Here you'll need to develop your understanding of where the right position of the scapula is and be able to assume the correct position at any given time. Exercise 1 is the W to neutral position. Take a W position on the wall. From this position, bring your arms slowly back to standing position while trying to hold the scapula steady. Start with 10 reps for 2 sets. Exercise 2 is some old-fashioned practice next to a mirror. This is a practice also used by a 2019 study. Position yourself next to a mirror and try to drive your shoulder back to a position that is in line with the vertical axis. Move in and out of posture. Practice this for at least 10 reps and 2 sets. Step 3 is about increasing strength in the muscles that keep your scapula on neutral position. These are mainly the lower trapezius and the serratus anterior. For the serratus anterior, I propose the single arm lift from kneeling position. Here we are counting reps for sets, increasing the intensity by slowly going lower or using external force. A good starting point would be 3 sets of 8 repetitions. For the lower trapezius, the exercise you should do is a type of prone arm abduction. Now about this movement, Kanye et al. in 2008 has found that the best angles in which to activate lower trapezius are at 90 and 125 degrees. And Lim et al. at 2015 proved that the optimal position of the arms for increased activation of the lower trapezius is at 90 degrees with arms externally rotated and at 125 degrees with arms internally rotated. For all these reasons, I propose two exercises. One, a prone 125 degrees arm abduction with internally rotated arms and two, an arm abduction at 90 degrees with externally rotated arms. You should work on this starting from 6 repetitions and 2 sets and slowly progress with increasing volume and intensity. Also, be careful to have your shoulders locked down, otherwise you'll be activating more of your upper trapezius. Moving on to step 4, which is increasing muscle endurance. If you have the strength to pull your shoulder back but you are quickly tired, then you won't be able to keep this position for long enough. As I have mentioned before in my channel, general preparation is key. But when it comes to becoming good at something, nothing can be better than spending time on the activity itself. This means that if you want to have the endurance to keep neutral position for long periods of time, you have to stay in this position for long periods of time. For this reason, I propose two different things. One, hold the neutral position on the wall by keeping the shoulders attached to the wall. Keep this position for minutes and sets and mind the entire position of your body. The second would be to practice the neutral position during different moments in your day. This means just reminding yourself to keep the neutral position and holding it for as long as possible. I found out that the best strategy is to schedule reminders throughout the day and most importantly during the hours when you know you'll need them most. You can do this just with your phone's alarm or use more sophisticated devices like Upright which vibrates and sends notifications every time you get out of posture. This is going to be tough only for the first few days because the muscles that support us in standing position are designed to work without really feeling them activate. When you're standing, there are hundreds of muscles that work in order to keep you in this position, but you don't really feel them. The same thing will happen after a few days with your shoulders posture. This last step comes hand in hand with step number 5, which is changing bad postural habits. Besides the obvious, which is practicing good posture at the times that you were previously destroying your posture, an important component would be to adjust your environment according to your needs. 
Take the time to identify which habits are responsible for your rounded shoulder position and find alternatives that can slowly eliminate them. Remember that no matter how much time you put into practice, if you keep spending hours and hours out of posture, your body will choose to adapt to this. 8 hours out of posture is a much greater stimulus for your body than 10 minutes of posture correction exercises. To summarize what we saw, the cause of rounded shoulders is the combination of bad postural habits and gravity. The two largest misconceptions are that tight muscles on the front involuntarily pull your shoulder forward and that the external rotators of the rotator cuff will pull them back. This bad habit of keeping your shoulders forward results in tightness in the front and in the muscles of the back, reduced body awareness, loss of strength and strength endurance. The correction of rounded shoulders comes through a five-step process on which we ensure range of motion, develop postural awareness, increase strength, develop muscle endurance, and get rid of the habits that deform your posture in the first place. So that was the video. I really hope that you practice these steps and I'm waiting to hear about your progress in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, share it with your friends who want to fix their posture and do me a big favor by liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.